continuing with authentication, we have talked about something you know, generally speaking, passwords, something you have, a card or some kind of token, uh, or a one-time password device sometimes. Uh, now we come to something you are, and this is, of course, biometrics. Now, I have deliberately covered biometrics in a separate clip because uh, there's an awful lot of uh, factors in, involved in biometrics. I mean, ostensibly this is um, the, the most secure because it's something you are. You know, there's something about you that is unique, that is distinguishable. Uh, but number one, remember this is something you are. You can't change. Generally speaking, you can't change the things that are being used for biometrics. Um, you you can't change your fingerprints. You can't change your DNA. You can't change. I suppose these days you maybe you can change your DNA with some kind of fancy phages or something. Anyway, um, basically, you know, this is something you can't change about yourself. So this is the ultimate static password. If your biometric data gets compromised somehow, uh, that's it, game over. There's, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. There's nothing anybody can do about that. Um, there's, uh, well, there's, you know, I mean, there's lots of problems with biometrics in terms of uh, do we, you know, have the thing, you know, are we just accepting the right index finger. And, you know, what happens if somebody's missing the right index finger? Uh, so, um, anyways, what, what do we use for biometrics? Uh, well, I mentioned fingerprints. Um, that actually isn't the oldest. The oldest uh, goes back to something called Bertillonage, uh, which was measurements of the bones in, in the body, um, at least insofar as they could. You know, the, the length of the arm bones, the uh, uh, width of the skull, um, various things. They uh, uh, did that, and it, it wasn't until... Ooh, around 1900, I, I think slightly before, um, somebody in India actually started to use um, fingerprints for uh, identification. Um, and, uh, you know, anyways, various factors. Uh, they did find uh, somebody whose Bertillonage measurements were, in fact, uh, two people who had identical measurements. Uh, the... Uh, and fingerprints are unique and and over it's it's the most mature technology certainly in in the length of time that we have been using it um the reliability uh, the maturity of the uh storage and and search um capabilities that we have uh with regard to to fingerprints um you know that's that's the one that we've been using um but there's others. Um, palm scanning. Um, and, and this doesn't actually, you know, read the lines in your palm and tell you how long you have to live or anything like that. Um, this is actually uh, going back to Bertillonage, to the, the measurements of the, the length of the fingers, um, the uh, 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 breadth of spread of the palm, that, that sort of thing. So um, it's taking uh, those kinds of, of measurements. So the palm scanning, um, and uh, I don't know that anybody is, is really using it these days. You, you mostly see it in old movies, uh, old science fiction movies, where uh, they assume that palm scanning, which was um, the most reliable uh, digitization, of biometrics at the time that they were making movies in the 60s uh, was um, available. And so people thought that, that was what we were going to use. And of course, we're using a lot of other things. Uh, so, uh, uh, retina scans. Um, now we come to um, 
issues of acceptability and usability here um, with regard to uh, retina scans and iris scans. Basically, we're doing the same thing. We're, we're taking pictures of the eye. Um, but with the retina scan, of course, we've got to do it um, uh, at the back of the eye. We, we have to uh, see the back of the eye. And so very often we're shining a laser into people's eyes and people don't like that. And people don't like having to go right up to the reader, putting their eye up to the reader and having a laser shot in their eye and mapping the, the blood vessels in the back of the eye. But uh, iris scanning, they don't even notice. Um, if, you, uh, if you go across the American border uh, and you are not an American or Canadian, um, you have probably had your, your iris scanned without even knowing it because it's just a little thing that looks like a webcam. Uh, it's uh, maybe a foot or two feet away from you. People don't even realize it's there. And, you know, they got a picture of the, the front surface of the eye. That's the iris. Uh, and so that's what they're mapping there. And um, actually, if you can get some uh, high-resolution close-up images of uh, irises, they are really beautiful patterns sometimes. Very, very artistic, very lovely uh, things. And, and so you can see why the... Uh, the details, the differences between them, uh, and again, you know, get high resolution uh, pictures of irises and, and look at them and you will see the, the wide variety of structures uh, that there are in the iris um, as expressed um, in terms of, you know, the, the visible uh, front of the eye. And, and it is visible, you know, uh, it's easy to take that picture. Um, so uh, there's that as the uh, uh, that sort of thing. So that those are sort of static uh, uh, types of uh, biometrics. Um, and uh, uh, we'll talk next time about some of the more um, uh, active, maybe uh, some some of the things that. Uh, uh, rely on your activity.